On a barren, sandy seabed, in only 12 meters of seawater, the bones of a large warship lie strewn. Iron cannons stand like sentinels, still protruding through their gun ports. Oak timbers, pulley sheaves, and huge copper nails are all that's left of the once mighty HMS Colossus. The Isles of Scilly, an archipelago of islands situated some 28 miles southwest of Land's End, Cornwall. Their clear waters, rich history and breathtaking scenery attract thousands of visitors each year. Until the invention of lighthouses and electronic navigation, this area's rough seas full of dangerous rocks have been the cause of a thousand shipwrecks. Avid diver Todd Stevens moved to the islands in 1999. Here he met his wife and diving partner. Wreck hunting is his passion and on moving to Scilly he eagerly set about doing just that. Literally on his doorstep was the wreck of HMS Colossus and as a result he took a keen interest in the site. It was while investigating the wreck further that Todd's remarkable new discoveries were made. Construction plans for HMS Colossus came by way of a captured French prize ship called the Courageo. This was a deliberate act by the British Navy, as the Courageo was known to be a fast and formidable enemy warship. However, the Navy was to vastly improve on the design, giving rise to the Courageo class of British 74-gun ships of the line. The elm keel timbers of Colossus were laid in 1781 on a slipway located at the most western end of the Thames Riverside at Gravesend. Her construction was overseen by Quaker and shipbuilder William Cleverley. Nearing completion two years later, her empty oak hull was placed into the water and left for a phase of wet seasoning known as ordinary. HMS Colossus was finally rigged, armed and put to sea on the 4th of April 1787. With a lower gun deck of over 170 feet in length and almost 50 feet wide, HMS Colossus was large enough in size to take on a first-rate, three-deck ship of over 100 guns, but small and fast enough to give effective chase to a frigate. At just over 1,700 tonnes burthen, the ship mounted 74 carriage guns, divided between two main gun decks. With two carronades on her upper parts, this brought her total armament to 76 weapons in all. She was faster than the French Courageo she imitated, as being fitted partly with smaller calibre guns substantially reduced her weight. This led to the newspapers of the time describing her as one of the finest 74s in the service and a prime sailor. George Murray joined the Navy a boy, at the age of 10 or 12. A bold and courageous man, it was said at one time that, like Nelson, he knew not fear. This was an accolade earned from many engagements at sea with the nation's enemies. By his early 30s, George Murray had impressed the Navy board with his courage and seamanship. His career commanding frigates such as the 38-gun Nymph had not gone unnoticed. As a consequence, Murray was elevated to third-rate commander, becoming the 10th captain to be appointed to the 74-gun man-of-war Colossus. June 1793, 
War between England and revolutionary France broke out at sea, and Colossus covered many duties. However, her main duty was on station with what was then known as the Blockading Inshore Squadron. This work she performed well off Toulon, Malta and Cadiz. Regarding the inshore squadron, the Naval Chronicle state that only the fastest ships in the fleet are chosen for such a duty. In major battles, Colossus was often among those to take the lead. After the Battle of the Island of Guar in 1795, Admiral Lord Bridport stated, I made the signal for four of my best sailing ships to chase down the French. Colossus was one of the four chosen warships. Later, in 1797, her rigging was severely damaged whilst fighting against the combined Spanish and French fleets during the Battle of Cape St Vincent. After repairing at Lisbon, she later returned to station off Cadiz until Napoleon threatened Naples in 1798. During the evacuation of the town, Murray and the Colossus were then chosen by Lord Horatio Nelson to take a precious and extremely valuable collection of Greek antiquities away from Naples to the safety of England. This was done as a favour to close and personal friend of Nelson, Sir William Hamilton. Sir William was the British ambassador to the court of Naples, who had spent many years acquiring a vast and priceless collection of Greek vases. Hamilton made a plea to Nelson to remove this collection to the safety of England, where it could be sold to the British Museum. During his time in Naples, Sir William Hamilton's second wife, Lady Emma, became jealous of his increasing affection towards his amassed collection of statues and Greekware. In a bid to win back his attention, she started posing around his court on various plinths and stones in a manner similar to the vase depictions. Word of this spread far and wide, and Emma's attitudes as they were known were frowned upon and attracted much attention from Naples to London. In the shadow of Mount Vesuvius, Colossus was loaded with this precious and priceless cargo. Murray set sail from the Great Bay of Naples in November 1798, returning to England ahead of a small convoy. Before leaving for England, Nelson, embroiling himself further in the tail of Murray's ship, commandeered three of Colossus's guns and her spare main bower anchor for use on his own ship, the Vanguard. From the moment the anchor left Colossus, she was doomed. After a rough trip in increasingly bad weather, Murray sighted the Isles of Scilly. He anchored his ship in the St Mary's Roads under the protection of Garrison Hill and decided to stay until the weather abated. After three days of gale force winds, the ship began to drag her anchors until eventually one of the cables parted. Colossus had no spare anchor as Murray had given it to Nelson. The order was given to reduce windage and the crew removed as many parts of the rigging as possible, but this failed to reduce the ship's progress towards disaster. As a result, the Colossus began to bump on rocks to the south of Samson Island. For three days, Colossus sat in conditions such as these until the wind veered from the southeast. This blue Colossus towards Samson and the waiting Southern Well Reef. Before long, the rudder was smashed off the stern and this left Murray in no doubt that his ship was now lost. That night she settled on the reef, forcing Murray to facilitate rescue.